Hi. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Well, I think morning for almost everyone. <laughs> Brandon, if you're talking, you're muted. How about now? Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. All right. Uh, I was just giving the 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 intro spiel. Um, so uh, I'll repeat. Um, so this meeting is being recorded. It's going to be uploaded to LFX. Uh, so do take note of that. Um, Participating in this meeting is also governed by the LF and Open SSF for Conduct, as well as any antitrust um, policies. Um, so, more details on the Open SSF and LF pages if you want to look more into that. Um, yeah, if not, I think we can get started. Um, so any new friends or folks that want to reintroduce themselves that haven't been around for a while? Okay, so yeah, I've been in the meeting, I guess, once in a while. Um, Tobias, I'm a security economics researcher from Berlin, Germany. I'm joining the work meeting, basically also the same questions, like when, when UI, is there interest in building a UI and whatnot? Welcome to Bias. Thanks, thanks for joining this. I know, I know, I think like probably a year back, <laughs> we may have talked a little bit and then I totally dropped the ball on that one, but, but thanks for, for, uh, for coming to follow up on that. No problem. Cool. Um, so this is a maintainers meeting, um, and usually we just go through kind of what we have on the list um, because we are approaching 1.0, so we're kind of keeping track and triaging a bunch of those notes. Um, so let's look through the list. Um, I think, Alistair, do you have anything that you wanted to chat about today or anything you wanted to update us on with your experiments? No, not really. Uh, I've been trying to get uh, Ant to behave a bit better about the, the queries it generates. Um, possibly just the one one interesting thing to, to raise is that, I um, also mentioned this to Path in, in a discussion last week, um, I'm, I'm also trying to use the data set generated by ingesting some stuff into, into Glock as a test case for the graph query capabilities that are currently being developed for Postgres. So if that all goes to plan on the, on the Postgres community side, the need for a specific sort of graph relational mapper should go away in Postgres 18. Nice. That's cool. All right. Um, before I go, in, go through the pendings, collectors, um, any other things that folks want to bring up as blockers? Any reviews that you want people to take a look at? Yeah, I'm working on a quick uh, for Atlas migration. It's a second Docker file. I'll we'll probably build so that you can have in the in our repo, so you can run you know the migration whenever you need to. Uh, this yeah, finishing that up. Probably push it later today. 
Yeah, I pushed out the uh, released a new version yesterday. Just for some minor minor bug fixes and all that kind of stuff. So I don't think there's anything critical. Um, yeah. So oh, that's what I said. Um, last call for any outstanding new issues. If not, we'll go through the, the open this. Um, let me pick a few from this, this, from the top. So we have the EOL discussions, Cyclone DX, Virgin Rangers. Um, C sub re architecture. We, okay, this is post 1.0. Um, actually, you know what? This would be helpful if I just share my screen. So, so I'm going to organize this a little bit. Um, there's one kind of stuff to put here. Uh, so we can talk about EIL stuff. I feel like this one we already talked about um, for the second DX version ranges. Um, but let's just revisit that in case. Um, and then we can look at this. So EOL, we started discussing this last week, right? So we talked about, if I recall correctly, we talked about this as a data set of having information about whether things are end of life. The concerns brought up by Ben was that um, some of these may change and therefore we need to be careful when we're handling the data that comes from this because end of lives may be pushed back um, possibly. So I think the question here is how do we want to have this information be represented and be added into the graph? Interesting. So this only tells you whether something has been end of life, right? I don't think it tells you whether open. Oh, okay. Some of them actually give um, dates here. And then some of them are just like yes or no. Yeah, I think some of it is dependent on whether or not the vendor or the project you know, publishes an expected end date or not. Gotcha. Yeah, I wonder what there's also a, Go for it. There's also a complication for things like Spring and RabbitMQ where uh, commercial customers get longer support windows. Gotcha.
So I guess we, we would still need to say like what the collection source is, right? So in this case, you say this is from end of life date. So if they did have another source of like a vendor, for example, enterprise DB that handles maybe extends the, the life, lifetime of, or I don't know, I don't know whether Pocana is the same thing. Um, the extends the life of it, we would have to somehow feed, feed the information in separately. Um, I think, how are these queried though? All products. Interesting. Okay, so these are all names. So likely we would have to just use the poll, the poll name to map it or something. I don't think it. Uh, what's the input? It's just uh, a... so it's product and cycle. Product and cycle. So I guess what does cycle mean? Cycle is the release cycles. Yes, yeah, well, specifically like a version or like if there's a code name for something. I mean, you could also just refer to I think it's you everything. Uh, oh. Sorry, Brandon. Could you share this on a more conventionally shaped screen? Oh, sorry. It's showing up very small in the middle of my monitor because it's vertical. Wait, sorry. Wait, let me. Um, That's let better. Me, let me swap my, my windows around because yeah, I have. This, whatever, uh, whatever you I've did, uh, it worked. So this yeah. is good. No, I, I have two monitors. One of them is horizontal. One of them is vertical. So. Um, Cool. Okay, so you just um, pass in the product, which is just a product URL. Okay. Well, what does yeah, product well, URL mean in that pro, case? I think product <laughs> is here, right? So over here, they give you that it's all products, which are, are names. Um, so it sounds well, like I this. Go. I don't know. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, I think some of this you can just map to potentially package names, but then probably has a yeah look this looks like it has to be a certifier right because you have new packages come in with Redis and like I mean the software identifier discussions we're having will solve this issue because then you could just say like package name Redis or package name Rabbit MQ and it will be able to map onto uh the different things. Mm. I did what's this thing that yeah. Oh. Okay, so this one has also the commercial extended support in here. That's interesting. I guess I don't know how they would encode it in here. Release this status. Support. Yeah, the, the, the web interface shows the two dates for RabbitMQ, but I, I don't see where the fields would be in that in that document. Yeah. We need to have an extended date to the API. Um, I, I mean, I think at least on the technical level, it seems feasible for us to get some of this information. Um, I'm kind of curious, um, Ben, since you created this issue, what was the, um, was there any users that were looking at, at this? Yes. Um, somebody was asking about it in Slack a while back and I had, Indep I think I had independently thought of it myself and then okay. had opened the issue like right before they asked about it in Slack or I opened it because they asked about it in Slack. But gotcha. And I, you know, I think at least as a first pass, if we can have good ish 
representation and you know if we can't capture the full fidelity of all the different life cycles and whatnot um, then you know that's probably fine uh one of the things that the, sorry go ahead Pa. i was gonna say this this kind of seems like a good like first issue or someone like if someone wants to take a stab at kind of working through some of this i be a little bit involved but i think it's just a has metadata node right basically at the end of the day yeah at least i, I think there has to be there has to be um it's still not clear to me what some of these flags will look like because I think some of them is just like we, we saw previously, they just don't have a they don't have a date, right? I think it's um I don't know, let's pick some like this one. <laughs> like I, I don't it tells you whenever they stop they, they stop supporting it. Um Which, like, I think, you know, that could be useful enough information too, right? It's like, you know, ideally people would be able to query for things that are close to out of support, you know, for whatever value is important to them. But just knowing, you know, retroactively, like, oh, this went end of life on August 6th of this year is better than not having any information, I think. Mm -hmm. It does make it a little more complicated, but. So I guess would this be a certifier? I mean, we can make it a certifier. I think just make it like running it once a week, you know, like yeah. once every 15 days kind of thing. I, would, I wouldn't want to run it like every day. Yeah, I yeah, I I'm also kind of wondering whether like technically this could be just like a uh just call the service itself. <laughs> um, but I know that doesn't fit into the patterns that we have today. What do you mean, call the service? Just like like when you make the GraphQL query for well, has oh. better data, it calls the service with like oh, if your name is takes the name, find okay. the product. But but I think that's also problematic. Uh, because <coughs> I got a feeling there isn't a good one-to-one -one mapping or there isn't like exact matchings and we have to do fuzzy matchings for this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I still don't understand the input. It says product URL, but it, is there an example of what the product URL is that looks like? <laughs> uh, so I think it's just these product names. That doesn't make sense because how do you like so that's that seems like a, you know the package type kind of thing. It's not you need the name, right? So it's like it has to be more than that. I don't know if that can just do it in this window. Okay, so like let's say let's say Alpine, right? Um, so technically, it's okay. gonna give you every Alpine though, right? Uh, well, no. Like, what if I want a specific Alpine package? So I think it's just like I. I think it's yeah. all Alpine versions. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just Alpine. You can, so so then you can okay. append the that cycle. You know, so like three dot sixteen. Um, after Alpine, and then so be like I think three dot sixteen dot JSON if I remember the. The syntax correctly yeah and so that would give you that single version yeah i see yeah and and just to be you know um i don't know if you already went over to sorry I, I, my previous meeting went late but there's like about whatever it is like a hundred or so of these packages and that's like all the packages they know about i see okay yeah currently at least um okay so it's a very limited list okay yeah yeah, so it's whatever is like if you go to the end of life date, whatever is in that list or all yeah. the ones that they they have information on. Um, so yeah. I know that this like that was kind of one of the 
you know, it's better than nothing, but, but some folks are like, Hey, how do we get more data in there? Okay. I don't think everything is in this. Like I'm looking at the, the, let's say, let's pick one. What's the one that we had just now where it was just a yes, no. Uh, what's it? Okay, let's look at open tofu because I think it looks like it is a yes no situation. Um, so end of life. Oh, so it just says false um, here. Okay. So in this case, we just have to look at it, if it's false or not, and then add the metadata there. Okay. So I think the query would have to be something like get all these names, search, the certifier will search for a package with all these names, uh, for packages that has this, have this name, and then it would create a has some other data node, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah, so you don't have to query in a traditional sense of the certifier, right? Because we have a limited list. Yeah, we just do pack. We can query just by pick... package name equals one of these, right? One of these, yeah. And then just yeah. append to the package name as metadata. Yeah, I think that, okay. that works well. Yeah, it doesn't look like a long list, so. I mean, I, I guess we keep up, keep updating it every time we do a release if new things get added maybe what do you mean like, like we're going to hard code this basically right or oh oh sorry unless we're oh, yeah, requiring, this is a... we'll query the api okay yeah 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 okay got it makes sense <clears throat> um along those lines have we looked at um and i don't know what its status is i just remember some folks talking about it a while back uh open eox Uh, open EOX. Oh, uh, so Open EOX is something from I believe the Oasis Foundation. That's it, they're trying and and there's a bunch of folks from from the S bomb side of things and some other places that the the uh, it's essentially the way I view it is it's kind of like Vex documents but for end of life. So there's like you know so there's ways for you to kind of communicate um, some of this stuff now. Again, I don't actually know what the status of uh, some of this is, and and um, but I know that's something else that folks are looking at as a way of like, uh, and I don't remember. Um, yeah, some of the CISA folks are are looking at this as well. Um, again, this is more on like the spec side of things. So, like as an example, so not just like so we talked about right here just running the API calls and doing a certifier, but there might be stuff like, um, uh, you know, commute, here's a document about the current up-to-date end-of-life information, and, you know, uh, anybody can communicate that. Uh, so, you know, there might be something, you know, eventually there might be something like um, S-bombs or whatever sort of saying, hey, here's the EOX mm -hmm. endpoint or whatever. So if you ever need to query, you can query this sort of thing. Uh, it's, um, I don't know who is working. I don't know if there's anybody that we specifically know who are working on it, but I can definitely, uh, maybe just reach out and say, Hey, we're looking to maybe include this data as well. Do folks, uh, what's the status? Yeah. I don't recognize any of the names on this. Yeah. So from, from looking at it, it looks like there is no data to consume at this point. Like there's still yeah getting things started which yeah 
frankly, I wish they would just approach the end of life dot date and said, "Hey, let's work together instead of." Um, they they might have, you know, just to be clear, yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they could have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything that we can do with it no. yet, except maybe try and influence some of the direction. Yeah, looking at this, at least, uh, so I recognize Jay in the mailing list. Um, so I might reach out to Jay and just uh, from Microsoft and just ask him um, if is that like is this something that is people are are now planning to use? In which case we might be able to say, hey, look, end of life dot date. We'll use your stuff, but it looks like there's this standard that's coming out. Have you thought about that? Or it could just be, ah, you know what? It looks like this is not going anywhere. In which case we can we can also uh, take a step back there. Yeah, looking at the end of life dot date stuff, I don't really see any much movement over the past few months. So I don't know if it's dead. For the fun of it, have you thought about or is it relevant when this data is wrong? Like, is there a benefit when there's multiple sources for end of life? So I think that probably we want, like, long term, I think we want to kind of say, hey, there should be some sort of canonical thing, like, let's say the package uh, where, where the package manager is or whatever, like should be able to provide that information. Like I think end of life dot date is useful, but from, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but based on my understanding is they're, they're just pulling this data in and they're not like, it's some of it's manual, some of it's all this other stuff. Like, so I don't know, um, like there should be some better way of communicating it like from hey this you know apache here's an endpoint that has like if you hit apache you can look at all the apache products and what the you know end of life data is whether their s bombs are or whatever but in the meantime like a scenario where it would be a problem for a web user if this data is incorrect just you know Discriminating packages is probably like not a thing that a lot of people do, but when um, let's say this this data is somehow spoofed, would there be a benefit of like having um, end of life and open EOX and kind of like correlating that, or is that like what you because you said canonical and it's kind of it would be bad if, if there's multiple sources and you would try to uh, have a service that figures out which of those is actually like trustworthy or whatnot. I think it's likely that, I think in the same thing with a lot of the other stuff where I think eventually there should be maybe some sort of attestation that comes with it that's signed by someone. Um, so I think, at least one of the the positions that we've taken is like, okay, you know, we're, we're going to help you get all the metadata and here's like kind of a decision based on certain policy, but you know, you could also um, go look at all the documents and then make your own decision of saying like, oh yeah, I don't really trust this because this came from end of life or date, but I really want to go like, um, check it myself um, yeah I'm, I'm like just um sort of poking around like super naively i'm sorry about that but maybe someone could um talk a little bit more about like the uh, sort of trust that the underlying tools have you mentioned okay certifications would be awesome um, or attestations would be awesome because i work with a group of researchers and we want to talk to like the scorecard team as well um because there's I guess a security bug in there, um, and yeah. So maybe like this is relevant for you to discuss in this meeting. I don't know; it's not on the agenda, but um, like what what kind of like can go wrong if the underlying tools don't report accurate data? Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think that. Oh, go ahead, Brendan. No, I was just gonna say I think that would be good as like a larger call with with, with uh, maybe like either community call off the hours. I think that could be a good discussion. Point. So we get, I think other people also would, a broader audience would like to know that information as well. Yeah, and and I think I think one of the things that we do um, on that front though is we do sort of tie the information we're pulling in, like we try to t tie metadata about like when it was pulled in, 
uh, where did it get pulled in from and so on. So that like, if you do go back and you're like, oh gosh, uh, there was scorecard info that but like, you know, there was an issue. So we don't know if the underlying data between these dates were, were good. Um, we have that tagged. Um, yeah, so we have it in source information. Yeah, so so we so on that end, you you know, like okay, well, it, right now it's not the easiest, but you still ha we still collect that data, so we know like, let's say just this S bomb, right? Okay, well, this S bomb turned out to be bad. Okay, great. Well, we have source information about how we actually parsed out all the data, so we could always go back and say, okay, great, let's collect all that information and do something with it. Let's collect all the nodes that have that problem and do something with it, whether it's delete or whatever. We also have, we well we also initially create that trust information, but we realize like for most of the data that we we ingest in, where there isn't any like most of them don't have trust information yet, um, yeah. but the plumbing isn't there. But yeah, yeah, I think that's probably like a, um, a a bigger topic, but it's super interesting and and awesome that you already kind of like have some notion around how you kind of, you know, want to sort of self heal or recover. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna check out that link. Sounds good. And for scorecard, um, like it's probably not gonna be a big disclosure or we don't wanna make a big deal out of that, but we have been looking into it for, for a while. And um, like, I guess, and I will also like notify this group um, about like the contributor score, which can be spoofed like after a talk to the scorecard folks how they want to handle it as a heads up. Awesome. Um, I, I think one thing that I have on my mind uh, before I forget, um, in Ben's comment, one of the, the, the things was like, Depth of Death doesn't have this. Um, I'm kind of wondering, like, if we look at the, the scope of products that are part of this, is this something that Depths of Death would be able to fully cover or not? Because I think I see a couple of things like Windows um, that looks like there are like commercial software that is not necessarily open source. Well, I guess part of the question that too is would Windows appear in an S bomb that we would care about from a guac perspective? Because like, uh, I don't know if devs.dev, I, I would assume it doesn't include like Linux distributions and stuff like that too, just because like what is a dependency for a Linux distribution? Like that's, you know, very complicated and depends on you know, which variant and what packages are installed and things like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like from a guac perspective, I don't know, maybe if we start having people like pull container images and stuff, they might have Alpine or Fedora or Debian in there. Um, but, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to see what, what identifiers they are in this case. Um, I don't think there's a pull for Windows, right? No. Um, like it was appear in the CPE, and I think Red Hat was also mentioning about CPE, so maybe we we may have to consider some of this if there is no poll. Um, yeah, that's a good point because. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Um, so we are capturing CPEs. Okay. Help me encoding them or, in the package again. Or XPDX at least. No, I'm not sure for what's like DX. As metadata or as packages? As metadata. As as metadata. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm, that'll be tricky also. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, it does sound like at least if we do this as how we talked about with the API and Korean, we have the package name from the pull, mm -hmm. this will hit maybe like half the things. Um, and then we still need another story around things that are not open source packages. Um, yeah. Very subjectively, I don't know whether we should hand we, we should concentrate on that one instead. Um, but I'm fine. It, it sounds good for us to put this as, like you said, um, good first issue. I don't think there's any urgency. Is there urgency from our end to implement this? Not as far as I see. Okay. Is there for the issue like a clear model what's from Google's perspective good like is it better to have an end of life date or like not for proprietary or open source I mean sorry it's it's like when um when a, a project has a lot of CVEs it's the same discussion, right? So is it better to know something is like ending or is it better when it's unknown? Either because it, there is no end of life because projects are actively main, maintained or it's just in this class of no one knows if, if, if it's being maintained or something. Yeah, I, I imagine the consumption flow would be something like um, there is the has metadata that this is maintained and the maintain equals to yes within the past, I don't know, seven days or 14 days or something like that, right? For however long the, the certify would run. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, I think there, there are two very different categories of projects there as well. You know, there are things like Exum um, that we looked at earlier, where the, the, the project policy is to maintain only a certain number of versions. So they'll declare things end of life as new releases happen. And then there are projects like uh, Postgres where they, they pre-declare those timelines years ahead. The things are only expected to last for five years. So it, it sounds like there are two pieces of metadata that has metadata here. Um, so one is like, is enough life? Is this kind of like current time? Uh, is this end of life today? And then end of life date, if exists. I think those are potentially two different query patterns. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't know whether this is a client side thing or a server side thing, but has this end of life appeared since the last time I ran? Is this something that has newly been declared that there will be a date? Mm -hmm. Sorry again, uh, you want to check, has the end of life changed since the last time, right? Yes, or, or, or is, is there, yeah, is, is there now an end of life where there previously wasn't? Okay. Ah, okay, so kind of like a, um, assumption, maybe this will be an alerting flow of change in metadata. Uh, this will probably be, yeah, some, policy engine, I'm guessing. I think also the is not end of life is not maintained case is interesting, right? So when there is no end of life and the project is not maintained. Mm. 
sorry, I, I was typing. I missed it, but no, I, the, let me finish typing up this. <laughs> this I can't do both at the same time. I'm gonna just comment this and then uh, good first issue and found wanted. Uh, I'll say next steps for this. I think that's good. All right, sorry, what do you say? Um, uh, Tobias, I think I missed your last bit there. What were you saying while typing? Oh. Right. So the, the idea was that the query for um, end of life date is not, and there is also no maintenance. I think that's an interesting query, right? When you, when you find these packages that are unmaintained and have not announced an end of life date, yeah, that's a bad thing, I guess. And yeah. usually, you know, not having an end of life uh, end of um, life date is a good thing. So, so you know, like having that as a separate query. Otherwise, people might just look for, okay, all packages that don't have an EOL are great, and that might be a, like a fallacy. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I think one of the things that we we had an issue on, if you want to comment on that, So this one. 
Yeah, I think if you want to comment on this one, I think we, we were trying to collect some ideas on what other, um, or like yeah. maybe this one, like what's the next actionable critical dependency? That could be an interesting one also, which I think this one is being worked on. Yeah, um, awesome. Cool. Yeah. So I'll put the, so some of these in here. 1505? Yeah, I think 1505, that one would be a good one. Yeah. Because these are kind of like things you you want to highlight in terms of like, oh yeah, you need you need to have a policy around this. Yeah, I totally would love to actually, you know, contribute there since <laughs> we're um, kind of like have to get our like stuff together here a little bit with Anisa and like the European software supply chain security landscape is not so mature. So there's more like base level um, questions around. But yeah, uh, thanks. I will definitely check it out. It's super interesting. Awesome. Cool. Um, we have about nine minutes left. Um, I think we already finished this one. So I'm going to take it out of queue. Uh, this one we don't have anymore. Just done that. Um, Puff, you had this on Cyclone like the Ice Rangers. Did we? I think we came to a conclusion on this, right? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, this one's a mess. Uh, I'll talk about. It. I think it's gonna take longer than you know, <laughs> nine minutes. Hold uh, on that. Authentication authorization GraphQL. I think we said that we post one point zero. Um, mm -hmm. Open yeah, SSL security on. baseline. I think this is stuff that like oh. on hold. Stuff I think that Dan was. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, I think we should probably still take a look and see if there, because I think there's probably going to be a couple of quick things we can do to to get us, you know, we're we're aligned with eighty percent of it already. I think there's a couple of things we can do to kind of um, bring it forward. But with with Dana no longer um, there, uh, I don't know. Uh, there's not really much of an incentive um, beyond just like I think we should look through and say oh yeah this thing here is an actual pretty good security thing we should probably make sure we're doing um but uh like the actual timelines um at least before was like hey let's get this ready by September so we can kind of show it off at like KubeCon or something like that um but with that kind of on hold uh I think we should just you know take a look to see if there's anything we should be doing. Um, there is this, there still is a, a baseline um, special interest group happening inside of OpenSSF uh, that uh, I'm going to probably join one or two more of those meetings. I think it, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it might be dead in the water. Um, but I'll, I'll keep you up to date because um, I think this sort of thing is something that staff needs to provide project management for. Um, yeah. and, and support for, cause it's not the sort of thing, you know, it, you know, it, if there is this baseline that the Linux foundation wants to push, then, Hey, that's great. Um, we're part of the, the Linux foundation and, and we want to make sure that we're doing the right things. Um, but we want to make sure that, you know, we don't want to kind of just, oh, okay, we want to do this thing, but without, you know, alignment from Linux foundation, there's really not a lot of like lift we get out of it. Okay. Um, it sounds and, and like I plan to, and I'm supposed to talk to Umkar uh, later this week or maybe next week on that. Um, sounds like we can just open it up issue if someone wants to work on this in the community. That's interesting. Kind of like checking out open SSL security baselines and then using our project as a as a as a, a vessel for that. Um. I don't have as much context as you on this. Do you mind opening up an issue just to be like, go first issue, um, have wanted? Uh, yeah, yeah. Do I? Uh, I'll take a look. Did I already create an issue for the baseline in the guap thing? Uh, let me issue. check. No. Okay. Yeah, I'll 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 open up the ticket then. Yeah. Okay. Let me do that now. Let me just check here. 
Um, it's, so one thing I've added uh, is I moved this like one point oh punches up here. Uh, and I think we should just maybe look at it every every meeting for like five minutes just to make sure we are still making progress. Um, so database stuff that's being progress. Um, case study for user acceptance. Uh, ben, I know I still owe you a review on the blog post. Um, so I'll do that. Um, so this one, we make good progress. Um, what's left is for me to go implement the depth of depth collector um, being integrated in the ingestion. We, yeah, and then this should be fixed. Um, I think we agreed on this, um, the REST API stability proposal. We just have to document it. Um, yeah, I'll send the PR for that this week. Awesome. Um, and I had a quick question on this, um, if Jeff is, I think Jeff is here. Um, I see that you put, it, if the GraphQL client issue is actually a bug in the generator, um, is that is that true that the compatibility is a between versions is a bug or because um, that that does affect how how we look at the um I think the the versioning of the REST API. Oh, why does that affect the REST API? Um, I think that if like if one like if one binary can can only talk to one. Um, one, say, version of the of the GraphQL API, um, then that is a bit limiting. Um, it limits. That means it. I don't think it makes as much sense to support multiple versions, um, multiple REST API versions in a single. Um, uh, why would you say that? Binary. Like, assuming that the REST API binary and the guac graphql binary are upgraded in lockstep why would that mean that we should not support multiple rest api versions and for multiple clients rest of the rest api that are not part of guac multiple rest api versions in the same binary as in having like a v1 path a v2 yes. path yes um, yes because like imagine there's a there's a there's a part imagine that there's a the binary is exposing yeah these two paths v1 v2 um <laughs> of the rest api um then the graphql changes um a predicate is dropped or whatnot um and say that predicate is like exposed in the rest api um and if you want to keep on maintaining like a v2 and v3 rest api um where the v3 say uses uses the takes into account that the predicate was dropped and the v2 wasn't um they'll need a different graphql clients like the the graphql client baked into the rest api into the guac rest binary can't um can't provide the previous rest api that exposes a the predicate that was deleted um I mean, it could, it, it could fill it with, you know, it could, it could have a field that's empty, for example. Um, I get, I, I get what you're saying. Like, I don't, it seems unlikely that um, there would be a change so that like the, the, the behavior of an older version of rest would not work. Um, but in that case, like, I think it would be reasonable to continue to support the old version um, without, you know, without breaking, like, somebody's code, whereas, like, they, like, go to, you know, access a member of a, an object that's, that's not there. Um, I mean, keep in mind that, like, the idea of 
allowing the REST API to have multiple versions is so that we can um, rev it more freely than the Guac major version, right? So we're not saying like, let's support every REST API endpoint forever, but just in a way that like, if we want to add something that's breaking, we can put it in V2 um, until like like the next major guac release major version of guac where we can drop the old one. Yeah. Um, I, anyways, Brandon, you, you have your hand up. Yeah, yeah I, I think like the the rest the the rest of the API should um, um I think should be as much as possible isolated in the sense that you know it shouldn't depend on like, right. it shouldn't expose predicate. Yeah, GraphQL predicates. Yeah, that um, too. Like we should. In the best case scenario, define the JSON schema of what the output would be. Uh, but I don't think we have to go to the extreme. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I don't know if I think there could be cases where, like, it just wouldn't be possible to support a, like, the previous uh, REST API version. I think um, that's a different question, though. This is like the question of like, do we want to support backward compatibility with REST API versions? So it, yeah, exactly. That means like we we do we want to support having multiple API paths in the the REST API like v1 v2. I think when it comes to that, I feel like if we if it really becomes a challenge that oh we can't support this anymore, then we would need to make that decision of we're deprecating yeah. that old version. Yeah, I mean the the and and the the question here about the GraphQL client versions like is un, unrelated. Like the the REST API, the idea that the REST API can have a V1 and a V2 is assuming that you would still only be on one Guac, the latest current Guac. Not that the user would have to run an old guac and a new guac or something like that. But at, at some point, you'll have to up, upgrade, like go from v2 to v3 of the REST API at the same time as the GraphQL changes. So you, you can't, I don't think you can always make that assumption. Yeah. Um, let's, we're out of time. Let's uh, put this on the, on the, um, list for next week. Sure. Sounds good. Or, uh, I'll try to submit a, a PR. Maybe we can discuss there. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Bye. The issue, sorry, one, one question. The issue, I, I would def definitely like to kind of look into this issue. I've sent, there's a guy that has been um, saying you wanted to work on that. Um, is that still current? Or because there was... It Position. I, I Sorry, could you repeat your question? If um, fifteen oh five, if if someone is working on it, because I don't want to like just randomly drop in there and take over the issue. It sounds really interesting. I will just ask in the next meeting. Hey, um, sorry, didn't want to keep you. Here. Michael, you're on mute. Next. Oh, sorry. What was that? Okay, I, I thought you said something. Oh um, no, no, no. I would just, I would you... just ask in the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah ask in hashtag. Yeah, the Guac OpenSSF. Yeah. Cool. Channel. Cheers. Bye. Later. Bye.